<laughs> hey, and welcome to another episode of the Geek 2.0 podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Joe. And we actually have a very interesting episode today, or this month. It's, you know, bringing out the, the woman empowerment. <laughs> and first thing that we're going to look at is gaming, which is blowing up. In a manner of speaking, <laughs> um, the question came up to uh, my daughter. Actually, was came up to me one day or one night. We were watching the Overwatch League that's been going on for the past month or so, and she asked me, "Why aren't there any uh, girl gamers up there on on stage?" And I couldn't really come come back and say, "Well, I don't know. I do know that there are some uh, girl gamers up. There is a lot of them out there." But I don't know why they're not like at the level that these people were playing at. It's a shame. Dads are supposed to know everything. I know. <laughs> I failed. I have failed this city. I failed my daughter. <laughs> no, it's just one of those things that you, you see it all the time. Uh, talking before we started recording, you said uh, that there are other pro leagues out there with actual... Yeah, I'm pretty... Um, I'm fairly confident, I should say, that I have seen girl gamers in pro leagues. Mm-hmm. I don't watch them like you and your daughter do, um, just because I, I personally can't just sit there and watch. Oh, it's a very exciting. I'm sure it is. I have no doubt in that. <laughs> just I'm not that into any games that have pro leagues. Like you don't see exactly a pro league Skyrim. <laughs> no, but there is. Okay, you got Overwatch, you got Starcraft, you got Hearthstone, League of Legends, um, PUBG, Fortnite. None of those I play. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, I'm probably missing probably a Minecraft. I mean, well, and you have obviously all of your fighter type games, yeah. the looter shooters and all that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't I don't play those. So there's not a game that I'm like I you know I want to watch the best of the best play. So, um, but I'm you know I mean you see you know snippets and you know mm-hmm. Facebook especially being in the geek culture you got you know fans and likes oh, yeah. of all types of geek pages so the stuff scrolls by i'm fairly confident i have seen female gamers out there um like in the pro leagues but yes it is something that you don't see a lot of. a lot of yeah i mean even like in the professional sports i mean they're all they're all segregated so you had the men's league and you had the women's league uh, it's like well, okay why can't we have like a co-ed like some of these women like basketball some of these women are harder and faster or just as good as the the guys well it it brings up an an interesting conundrum that only two white guys in suburbia could really you know talk about <laughs> <laughs> um so there has to be i i see no reason why we couldn't have that kind of intermixed leagues yeah. out there even in regular sports but I don't feel as a society as a whole we are ready for it. That's what I was going to ask. Do you think we're not ready? Yeah, I don't. It's, it's twenty nineteen. So. That's almost we're halfway. We are we are much better than we used to be. That is very even true. as in regards to like from when we were kids in the eighties to where we are now. We are much better than we used to be. Well, there's still pushback from a lot of like the uh, high schools. See, they have girl uh, football players, mm-hmm. and you'll you'll see like uh, on when it becomes big news, be like uh, all of a sudden a storm is raised because uh, this girl is on the football team. We don't want to get her hurt or anything like well, that because and, they think yeah. has like a, a lesser sex. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of where I was uh, getting to is in that same exact mm-hmm. uh, thought process that there's a lot of people out there on both sides of the spectrum oh, yeah. too. That you you can't win and you can't lose because either if she gets injured, it's because she was a woman. Yeah. Or if she does good, it's because they took it easy on her. Right. Or on the other side of it, uh, you have the the females that are, you know, just as extreme, you know, as the, the male-centric mm-hmm. outlook on it. There's the female-centric outlook where... They just, I'm not even quite sure how to put it into words right now, but basically it's just, they should be able to do this. They should be able to do this. They should be able to do this. And it's things that the male players can't even do, you yeah. know what I mean? But they take it to kind of that over the top extreme and it's, it's ridiculous. You know it what is. I mean? Like it's just, 
There should just be a common ground, and there should be no reason that a female, you know, football player can't be out there and tackle with the because best they're of all them. on the pad. They all have pads. They have all this protection. It's like it's just how your level of skill is the only determining factor of how you play or the team that you're associated with. Well, I mean, you can um, basketball to me is a good example just because football works, mm-hmm. but football you're getting into the side of like the like you see the female bodybuilders yeah because they have to be very strong in football because that's just how the sport is set up Mm -hmm. so that's definitely capable and out there to me if a female wants to play football she could play football because she's putting in just as much effort as the men to get up there she probably has more of an advantage because a lot a lot of them are because i i don't want to sound come across (laughs) this because when i look at like the high school football like the girl football players that come in front of the men's or the, the boys teams they're a little bit Shorter, which is be plays a perfect advantage in her because she is short, quick, and can get in and out, mm-hmm. no problem. While these got these lumbering giants, <laughs> <laughs> not all of them, some of them are fast. Oh, yes. <laughs> but um, on the side of like the basketball, there yeah. is no protective gear. Mm-hmm. Not that it's a extreme context. Same with but, uh, soccer or, or yeah, or European football, <laughs> but. All it takes is for everyone to play the game normally, but it's very simple for just like you see where one uh, player runs into another player and knocks them down onto the court. Yeah. That's all it will take is for one male player to knock into a female player and all it instantly all your, this is why I'm saying we're not ready. You're going to get all these people that are going to start going nuts saying you know oh this oh that or start that. booing it's like yeah boo, and it's like you know what i mean cups the whereas court. if it's all females it's fine if it's all males it's fine it's as soon as you mix the two that's why i'm like i don't think we're ready because that is going to happen you're going to get a True. ton of backlash that male player is going to get a bunch of negative publicity because of it you know what i mean there's always trash talking in sports and now that trash talking is going to have to be altered and careful you know what i mean it's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And even saying it, I feel like an idiot for saying it because it's <laughs> no, that's not the case. But I just know that well, that's why I say we're not. We ready know, for and a lot it. of people that listen to this, and for much a lot of people throughout the world and in, in, uh, in the U.S. have that same mentality. It's like they're ready. They can mm-hmm. do this. We know they can do it's it. Not it's not a just, capability thing. It's just the population of the world is so stuck back in their ways of the fifties. Like, oh. Well, the woman's place is in the kitchen. Which is ridiculous. Or being as my secretary, you know. It's like, no, that's... No. That's not the case then. It is now. Yeah. And like I said, we've we've come leaps and bounds, but we're still not to that point of truly seen as equals, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, and then you look at gaming. It's basically, there's no... <laughs> I don't want to come across as like putting it down. There's no actual physical... St- uh, like you gotta work out six days a week for hours on end, become a professional gamer. Well, I mean, to a degree, you do because you're you, you have to exercise play, your mind. And, and, well, and you're playing those games just at the same, and you have the the hand strength, the forearm not, strength, no, the like lifting weights. You're not, but yeah, you're gym. not exactly benching benching two hundred pounds. Yeah, <laughs> but it, there, I know there's are uh, uh, female woman gamers out there that are. Really Actually, good. Really good. And a lot of them, let's go back to the Overwatch League. There's one of them. It, uh, her name is, well, her game tag, she goes off as Fran. And I think she is part of the Atlanta Reign team. Not like the uh, pro team that you see on TV and on Twitch and everything. But she's like in the farm team. If, keep it like the uh, sports team. Okay. Like you have like the uh, farm team for baseball uh, teams. Like where they have the people that are really good are like not the minor leagues okay i'm trying to quickly run through that okay <laughs> explain it how the best way i could because i'm not very good on like sports <laughs> yeah, yeah same. I, not a good player <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the things that she is working through and has gotten to a level where if she is in the pros so to speak she's on a pro team it's not on like she's not on the highest TV tier side. yeah yeah, yeah. But I watched a couple of her um, streams, and and before the league started, she was actually at uh, Blizzard and playing on, like doing like a uh, multi-hour long streams. It's like her skills are really, really good. Well, and, it's and just, I think she's probably better than some of the players I've seen on the other teams. Well, and it's the same thing with a lot of your streaming 
uh, players, your Twitch mm -hmm. and Mixer and stuff like that, you have really highly skilled, talented players that are out there doing it. They're just not professional because yeah. it may not be something they want to do professionally. Um, but a lot of it, I was actually looking up a an article on this subject, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's definitely a loaded topic. Oh yeah, um, and it's it's not something. It, it's just like how we were kind of talking earlier. Like you either have one extreme or the other, and it's because of that that they have to work harder. Yeah, and that's. I mean, like we said before, and we're probably going to repeat ourselves so many times through this episode. It's ridiculous. It is. Um, but there's, there is the, as they put it here, they kind of did a really nice job in this article, but there's um, a subjectively, uh, there's a subjective skill gap when it comes between male and female players. Mm -hmm. It's not an actual one. It's just a perceived one. Right. You know, the whole, oh, well, she's a girl. She can't play as well on, you know, that side. It's the boys or, club type yeah. mentality. Yeah. So not that there actually is a skill gap. It's just the way that it is. And also because of the fact that there is a, and I'll say perceived because mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. And we haven't tried running numbers, but a perceived. For science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a perceived difference in the number of male and female players, mm -hmm. especially when you get to that higher tier because i i'm pretty confident that overall just your average gamer there's actually more female gamers than there oh, are yeah. male gamers but when you get to that kind of hardcore level of like trying to do this professionally i think that's where it tips mm -hmm. and there's more males trying to be pro gamers than there are females but it's also i think taking along that uh, line of thinking is that perceived uh skill gap is that most of the uh team captains coaches and owners and that's what they look for is they, they they're guys as well mm -hmm. so you already you already have that bias against you yes. know women gamers you know, this, the pro levels or be like okay prove yourself it's like we'll talk about layers like well Cap, um, carol damers doesn't need to prove <laughs> herself <laughs> but it's and it's that same and again without you know, really diving in, doing the research on this, I'm assuming that if there are female players out there that want to go pro, mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. For lack of better words, because they are putting in the time and the effort and they are pro. It's just that, that block, that yes. bias block that's keeping a lot of them from achieving where their skills, their capabilities are perfect and or more so. It's just that that bias is... Mm -hmm. And it's, hampering their, their uh, achievement, so to speak. Yeah. And as, as they put in this article, it's kind of a double-edged sword because of the fact that there's not, like, your exa prime example, your daughter, mm -hmm. because of the fact that she's a fan of Overwatch and she's watching these games, oh, yeah. because she doesn't see any female players out there, she doesn't have that idol a, a female yeah, idol someone to look up that to. she can use to drive if that's what she wanted to do to drive her to that mm -hmm. she has to have that uh what's the, the goal the willingness the desire the perseverance right. to be that first person and that takes a whole nother type of personality yeah, on top of just being a good gamer yeah i mean that you're looking at okay you have to be a good gamer but like you said it's you're having to be like this the rock yeah because you're gonna stream. have you know when you're when you're the first you're obviously going to have the hardest time you're going to have so out many path, people say well you can't do it. this yes or if you if you do mess up say oh see i told you yeah, yeah look 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 she failed <laughs> and to have the the guile to really get through all that and to be that number one that like we were saying that takes a whole even on the male side that's still just to be that kind of person takes mm -hmm. so much yeah even on the, on the male side it's 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 there and it's going to be a sneeze because it's going to be something that you look at like there's one particular person that has another sneeze <laughs> and this person is like the top of the like if you look at the paper they're top of the pro league 
but their play style, everyone in the audience or that been watching it say, says that they're not the greatest. Mm-hmm. It's just that how they play is conducive to how their team works. Yeah, it, it's just, it's tough. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it just flat out, it's tough, and there should be more. And given with enough time, and especially with the growth and popularity of esports, and with it considered, with it becoming more of a sport in a sense, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you're starting to see it on TV, you know what I mean? You're starting to see the popularity of it rise. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, you will start to see more well, female speaking players. Of that, it's actually of that. in Philadelphia, one of the teams of the Philadelphia Fusion. They're actually building a stadium for Overwatch League or uh, huh. any kind of esports that is going to be right next door to like the Jets, uh, all the other sports teams that are within the city limits of downtown Philadelphia. That's crazy. So it's like right there. It's in the limelight. Yeah. And this past uh, couple weeks ago, or yeah, two weeks ago, the finals for stage one was shown on ABC. Hmm. And also ESPN and Disney XD, and along with Twitch and all that. ESPN 8, the Ocho? <laughs> uh, I think it was like ESPN 3. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN 3 Trace. <laughs> okay. All right. But so still, it's, it's not quite as far down as Dodgeball. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> But no, it's one of those things that, okay, it's on primetime TV. Yes. Now. I mean, especially on a- uh, ABC. They had to cut it because I think they only bought like a two hour block and the game went like two and a half. Yeah. It, was, it was like it a three hour game. It wasn't like your football games where they go, yeah, we'll just keep running you. <laughs> no, it's kind of like, okay, why don't you have the same respect now? Nah, we'll, we'll go to like a rerun of whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it was actually a very interesting match to watch. Because there's both teams are like the best of the best for this one stage, and there's going back and forth, and there's like no middle ground. Mm-hmm. Like one win and the next matchup comes through, and it, it went like seven games, like three hours. I mean, it was very interesting to watch. But it's just the fact that the esports are becoming highly sought after because it's it is an actual sport. Yeah, it's definitely it takes a lot of skill and talent to oh, be yeah. able to do that. So I mean, it's. It's good to see, but it's also a shame that it's not where it should be at this point. Yeah. Um, I give it another couple of years, and it'd be on the level of go to ESPN 2, maybe 1. <laughs> it's climbing the ESPN ladder. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to base it off of what you made it. <laughs> Which when you're, channel? When you're actually on just ESPN, no number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're talking with like the, uh, the highlights. <laughs> um. <laughs> when they start doing it on the news broadcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it, I think that there will be, you know, with enough time, and I think it will be esports before regular sports, mm-hmm. where you really start seeing that mix. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's a shame and it's odd that there's not more of that kind of female yeah, thing. And this is something that we were we were hoping to have a... A female guest with us <laughs> today to be able to discuss their side of it, their viewpoint, because there's only so much that we yeah, can because, we can really go over on our side. Yeah, because there's, <laughs> there's 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 unfortunately with us there is a bias because we don't we don't have that experience that any kind of female girl gamers have gone up uh, have gone against. Correct. Like I mean, there's probably there's videos out there where you know I think it's like a, a CO, uh, Call of Duty game where. All of a sudden, she turns on the mic. It's like, hey, um, I need some ammo. All of a sudden, out of the woodwork, <laughs> her team is just throwing ammo caches at her. And it's like, you know what? Why? Yeah. Why do you need that? Are you thirsty? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, up I, in here. I've talked about it in the past before. My friend that plays on the Xbox under his wife's mm-hmm. profile, and he was playing on um, uh, Grand Theft Auto, the online game that was oh, yeah. the five that's just out. And uh, because of he it's was been out for a while, yeah, I know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, because of the fact he was playing under his wife's profile, mm-hmm. same thing. He had people just mm-hmm. throwing him all kinds of stuff, giving him cars, money, just all that, and then all these personal messages were flying up on his Xbox. Yeah, and it's just ridiculous. Um, so it would we definitely want a female perspective. And it's something that we can come back to this topic. Yeah, well, I'd love to come back to this topic because it's something that I'm interested in with a girl coming up and 
rising up in the ranks of Overwatch. I mean, she is actually really good. You'd be surprised. That's awesome. Like for an eight-year-old, almost nine-year-old, <laughs> and she is keeping up with the rest of us. <laughs> and she's out and doing me. <laughs> My, she's out there with on a character Widowmaker, and she's sniping. And it's like, if I try that, I'm like, I'm missing shots. I'm like, oh, let me go back to Diva. I'm more of a tank person. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, having a little two-year-old myself, it would definitely be nice to kind of have the uh, experiences of someone who's mm -hmm. kind of grown up with it and what to kind of keep an eye out for, what to help with, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, what are the experiences, as you put it, that they've gone through and the challenges and stuff like that so I can try to get my little girl to get that next leg up you know, yeah, at least there's just something where she can look at instead of again being uh, blindsided by absolutely. all of a sudden something happens in game. It's like what what's going on? Like at least she'll have that knowledge. And the people that went before her, yeah, have gone through the trials and tribulations of working their way up. And I know that we've got a few uh, listeners uh, that Cliff specifically, mm -hmm. who's been on this episode, who's now got a little girl. Yeah, so he's going to want to know this information. So <laughs> it's definitely, I feel it's a topic that's worthwhile going over, but we really need that female. Yeah, and I really want to dedicate like a whole episode with. Uh, if, so as we keep saying, we're pointing out and saying that if you didn't get that, <laughs> is that we would love to have someone, a, a female gamer, mm -hmm. a woman gamer, or even girl gamer, whatever let, the title that you want. Yeah. Come on a show. And it doesn't have to be video games. No. It can be any games whatsoever. You can play sports ball. You can yeah. uh, anything. Absolutely. We'd we'll love and to have you on. We can do... We're, we're, we're begging here if you haven't gotten this. <laughs> we can do remote. You know, if you just want to do it over Skype. Yeah. You know, I'm, we can do something like that. If you just want to email us and we can go through and ask questions and then, you know, discuss what we've emailed back and forth on over the next episode that's fine uh, just let us know yeah reach out to us please <laughs> so with that we'll go ahead and switch gears not really but into our main topic <laughs> now the main topic of this is along the same lines of the girl gamers is uh, movies yes yeah, the... icons pretty much something for the the uh the younger female uh, females to really look up to. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason that this was actually brought up, I was telling Josh about it, was my wife and I went to go see Captain Marvel in the theaters, and we enjoyed it quite a bit. And personally, we don't feel that it's getting the uh, fanfare that yeah. it deserves. Well, it, it is. It, it's, I don't think it's for the right reason. It's like the first female superhero uh, that mentality is probably getting pushed more. Like, oh, this is the first Marvel character that's a girl, or it's like, no, it's, yeah. But no, it, a lot of go people down are just down talking the movie in general, mm -hmm. um, and it's just it. It was a really good movie. I th yeah. I felt at least, um, and I know my wife feels the same. I loved way. all the nineties uh, references. <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing? It's loading. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> cut back, cut back, cut back. <laughs> um, but the thing that both my wife and I walked away from the movie without talking to each other about it, mm -hmm. uh, like while the movie was going on, we both walked out of the movie and we both had the same thought. And when we brought it up, it was like, yeah, totally. Was that to us, we were very happy in I hate to use the word content but I don't I'm losing any other word right now with Captain Marvel being that good strong female lead for the mm -hmm. for my daughter to idolize yeah you know if she chooses to obviously um and we were thinking about it we're like you know while there are other female superheroes out there there's not the the really great stand on your own two feet always get back up you know yeah. what i mean that kind of mentality you get knocked down you're, you're going to brush yourself off and exactly keep going uh there's just there's not that at least from our perspective mm -hmm. and I'm, there's always arguments to be made and mind you we are specifically just talking about the marvel cinematic universe i will just go ahead and state that yeah. now i mean there's i know there's <laughs> i know there's other movies with strong powerful female leads but we're looking at because geeky part of this is the Marvel <laughs> and one thing is like okay after Avengers Endgame what is the process going going forward for the next decade because that's Marvel's mindset lately has been 
it's a slow burn of these stories leading yeah. up to a culmination of a big to do. <laughs> yeah, which it's they're following a very very similar formula that they do with their comic books. Mm-hmm. They get the, the oh, overarching like story. Yeah, yeah, it would jump right into the Justice League. You're like, huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but they have the overarching story with each individual story following the same path on their own little. Yep their own way of getting there and then you have the overall the big boom and then they start fresh with the new storyline it's the same kind of thing you have each individual stories with the overarching story and then the big boom and now there's going to be a whole fresh series of entities um because i don't don't know should we dip into a little bit of spoilers or anything in regards to captain marvel because there were some where uh, things that I think they could continue on in other movies, like character wise, like the little girl. Well, they did, and that is supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, uh, that is. That so I don't is, know if you wanted to touch on that. Yeah. Well, I think that right there is good enough. Okay. <laughs> um, so I don't want any angry emails or. <laughs> well, you spoiled the movie on for me. We have to have our fan base reach out to us in the first place. Yeah. I mean, if it gets them to reach out to us, it gets them to reach out to us. <laughs> right, 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 let's go full spoiler. Because there's one time in the one scene with that one. <laughs> um, in the background, you could have saw. <laughs> no, there was, there's definitely, and with, I, I'm trying to stick to the, the main topic here. Because yeah. it, it, there are things about that movie that dig bug me in regards to timeline. And either I'm missing something or they they got. What are you talking about the second uh, after credits thing or? No, the the movie as a oh, whole. as a whole. Yeah, there's a timeline perspective that throws me. We can talk about it later. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's a whole other tangent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, from the, the female side, like, the it's it was something that we were really excited about. And, like, my wife and I were talking. And, like, there, there is, you know, on the DC side, mm-hmm. you know, um, wow, I just drew a blank for a second. Wonder Woman. Uh, <laughs> as, as we go say, Wonder Woman. <laughs> you have Wonder Woman, which got great reviews. You know, a lot of people were really happy with it. And it was a good movie, but I, I don't know what's so different about Captain Marvel compared to Wonder Woman, at least from uh, my wife and I's perspective, because we didn't necessarily, when, or at least when I saw uh, Wonder Woman. I didn't walk away with that going. Mm-hmm. This is a great, in my opinion, a great role model for my little girl. Right. Uh, whereas I did instantly think that way with Captain Marvel. So I don't know what the difference is, and I haven't gone back to watch Wonder Woman with I that think, mindset to see. I think what was the issue with Wonder Woman is because we were so what two three movies with Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, and. I'm blanking on the third one. Mm. It's, uh, probably, but we're all so like like downtrodden because it was DC. It's all like the uh, muted heavy, colors, heavy. <laughs> heavy. It's like uh, destruction porn, and it's just like we're we're so tired after two movies. Like, come on, let's have some kind of bright spot. And when a woman did bring that, because yes, yeah, she might not. I'm not going to say she wasn't a role model, but she was somewhat of a role model because her life coming up to that point of becoming, uh, I'll spoil it because it's been a couple of years since the movie. Yeah, been it's out. been long it's, enough. You've had your, your, your time. <laughs> coming out from the island um, into the world, actual world and World War One, she was almost like the deer in headlights, but she persevered. She stuck to her guns, how she was brought up. Having to deal with, and there was some. There was one scene in there where, like, the whole gathering, like, of the men around, and say, "Oh, this is your secretary, what's she doing here? This is the men's only room. Like, be gone." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she stood there and she gave it everything, like, as, like, she held up her own because mm-hmm. that's how she was raised with all women. Yeah, and that's her ideals were kind of like, okay, I got, I'm, I'm a warrior. Mm-hmm. I have to stick up for myself. And if some guys can come up here and like be gone, no, <laughs> I'm going to get up in your face. But my issue with that movie is just, it, it was great up to a certain point toward the end it, with the end battle. It turned into a CGI destruction porn mess. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, that, it's, that's the combination of DC's, uh, cinematic universe. That's how they deal with things. It's kind of like jumping in. And yeah. Like, Here you go. And there's no real. There's no build up. Yeah. 
Well, and even with uh, even with the MCU, I mean, there's other good, strong female characters. Your Scarlet Witch, your Black Widow, mm -hmm. your um, Sherry Gamora. Yeah, you have Sherry from, and from Black Panther, and then um, oh, I'm blanking on uh, the Nigeras. Okay, Oki, Oki. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah, I can only picture her in Walking Dead <laughs> <laughs> with the dreadlocks. Like, wait, where did your hair? Oh, she says so that's good. how she is. That's, she so, loves that look. So good in that role. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, so there is strong characters, but it felt like this one was. I mean, aside from the fact that it's a standalone, mm -hmm. so I mean, there obviously is more substance to yeah. her character than they've given other characters. But aside from the Black Panther female characters. Uh, she's the only one that really is strong enough to kind of do to take it on her own to show yeah. that she is her own that she doesn't need anyone else now that was one of the reasons that the Black Panther uh, movie in itself did get so much praise was because the female characters were so strong and yeah. could absolutely and they just, held their own and they were absolutely. right there with the guys I mean that's you're looking at them as equals, not as better or lesser. Yes, you're they're equal. not there for support. They could just as well do the same or do job. Or they're not the damsel in distress. I always have to save our princess. Yes. Yeah. They are They are there to help the Black Panther, but if they put on the suit, they would be just as good mm -hmm. as him. And it was very, very well put in that sense. And actually, he relied on his sister a Absolutely. lot more. Because without the suit, yeah, he had his fighting skills, but without the suit... As an augment of his skills, he couldn't really do much. Yeah. Um, and she completely upgraded his suit. Like, <laughs> that, that's the old thing over there. Yeah, this is the new one. <laughs> she was a smart. She had the Fair. brains. She might not have been the brawn, but her brains were more uh, aligned with his brawn. Well, and I th think she's going to be... I think Sherry is going to be putting on the suit, I think. Okay. I'm not positive, but I think she's in the coming up. I think she's going to be putting it. Anyways, um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going. To, that's another spoiler. Like another, <laughs> uh, so I mean, there's there's a lot that you know. I mean, there's a lot of potential. I guess mm -hmm. would be a great way of putting it. And like they are doing a Black Widow standalone. I yeah. think it's more TV series. No, it's going to be a movie. Is it a movie? Yeah, okay. I think they're. Uh, I think they found the director already. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just something. Well, because I know with Disney it's doing it, yeah, I know Disney doing its own streaming service. Like a lot of those characters are going to start to get their own little spinoffs, but they're going to be like more TV wise going that way. Um, and I think Scarlet Witch is getting something too. Well, I think that's where you got confused because it's going to be on the Disney Plus, the streaming yeah. service. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be on that. Correct. I just I couldn't remember if Black Widow was going to be a part of that or if she was an actual blockbuster. Yeah, it's in right now. The Black Widow is in pre-production. Uh, that was looking at IMDb. I was updated last year, July. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows by this point? Yeah. Um. So I mean, there's there's a lot of potential, but as of right now, I definitely think that. I mean, between yeah. the standalone movie mm -hmm. and Endgame, we already know that she's a major contributor to Endgame and how the story's going to play out as far as Captain Marvel goes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, she's a really great foundation, but it's just... I don't know. I really... I, I'm at a loss for words, and this is where <laughs> a female perspective would be really great. Yeah. But... Well, it's like going back and seeing... Because we talked... I told you this before, is that... When I took my daughter, we went to go see Captain Marvel. I was waiting for her to come out from the bathroom, and another theater was coming out. And there was uh, parents. They had the only issue I had with them is because they had taken a a, multi, a, a, a under if, one year old yeah. baby into the theater. I was like, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> but they also had a daughter that must have been around two, three ish. And she was out there and like, Psh. I was like, Psh. 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 I got my powers. Like, Psh. And she was just having fun, like in the, in the hallway. I was like, she yeah. was amped up. Yeah. <laughs> because that issue of the icon role model, yeah. model that she can look up to is that I want to be Cap uh, Captain America, not Captain, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Well, and the, I think we should kind of put a, an asterisk on this to say that we're not stating that there has to be a female character for them to look up to. No, they can they can absolutely look up to I Iron mean, they Man. Can look, or yeah. They can, you know, any any of the characters. But it's good to have 
that one that's just like them Mm -hmm. you know what i mean to to have that that personality or that character that they can relate to without it having to be a gender bent Mm -hmm. version of yeah you know it's just want to go ahead and throw that out there (laughs) so i was thinking about it as we're sitting here going wow we're really pushing this but that's not our intention. <laughs> no. I mean, it could be for any community. It can be for the black community, the Asian, and it's just Hispanic. It's the, the role models within movies and TV shows, they're coming. Yeah. They're already out there. I mean, Black Panther. I mean, look at uh, TV shows. Um, Us just came out with uh, Jordan Peele, is, uh, his movie. I yeah, haven't I seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it. My wife saw it, but yeah. I haven't seen it. But a whole lot of thing is like this other communities that it's just not... The white guy is just running everything. It's finally, yeah. <laughs> it's like seriously, as as as, as a white guy, <laughs> I am tired of it as well. I would like to see more inclusion of all these other communities: male, female, black, white, different perspectives, yeah, Hispanic. I mean, everything. Yeah. Just as the, if the story is good and the characters are what they are, that's is what matters to me. Yeah, well, and that's... Yeah, well, we're not going to get into all that. But anyways... <laughs> so I definitely... I, I'm excited. And, you know, my my little girl uh, got a present that was a pair of shoes that was all female Marvel oh, yeah. superheroes. It was really cool. Like, really, really cool. Um, but it was really neat also to see that they were even making something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's one thing to just be superheroes in general, but for it to be all the female superheroes was oh, yeah. really cool. Um, so, yeah, because it's been it's been a, a backlash um, when Iron Man and I think M- Iron Man two or the first Avengers came out. There was an issue where there was no Black Widow toys. Mm-hmm. There was all Captain America, Thor, yeah. Iron Man, but there was no uh, Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Which was like really weird because she's been a major character <laughs> since Iron Man two, yeah, and coming along up to the Avengers. It's like, what? Where is this? <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things that we look at. It's like and having daughters actually helps a lot because yes, we don't see that that side of things. Oh, it's we're, a perspective that we don't put ourselves yeah. in, and we wouldn't otherwise. Which is also kind of part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> yeah, expand your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Transparency. <laughs> but yeah, it's just one of those things to say, it's great. It's awesome that all this is coming up, especially for my girl coming up. Mm-hmm. And she can look to uh, these characters as something that she can put herself into. Yes. That's ultimately what we all what we all want. At least I, I feel mm-hmm. we all want. Who knows? Like, I mean, as you put it, there's the the neck beards out there. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's so many. This going back to like Gamergate. It's like it's it's not there is not. Let me put it out this way: there is not a lot of them. It's just a very vocal minority of them that, which is almost with any extreme. Yeah, there's always the, the extreme. Yeah, extreme vocal minority, and they just need to wake up. <laughs> Ain't gonna uh, happen. There is no revelation that's going to all no. of a sudden light bulb. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I was wrong mo- yeah. all for my life. I should no. be sad. Yeah. <laughs> Feel bad. But it's just one of those things like you have this minority, especially with social media as it is now. It's just so much easier to get a movement going. Because we talked about a little bit with um, Captain Marvel. I am not. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes had changed your algorithm or block it because there's so many um bomb brigades where they're coming in trying to bomb the movie mm. like not physically but say give bad ratings like, yeah don't see it this movie sucked and don't don't go don't go don't waste your money there's because there's so many and then social media people are trying to want to be part of a movement even though it's wrong or right they still want to be part of a movement so they choose the wrong one and hmm. they just bent, jump on that band rat wagon and say, give it one star Rotten Tomato. And it's like, don't go to see it, which it was even before the movie came out and they never saw it. <laughs> they probably still don't. And they say, oh, the movie's stupid. Don't go see it. Go see it. Yeah. M- make, make your, your own, own decision. informed yes. decision. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is like, um, if you say this movie is bad, like, did you watch it? No. I just saw a trailer. It's like, the trailer is nothing. Yeah. 
can the never trailers, go by the especially trailers. Especially with the MCU and a lot of movies, they cut in the trailer and stuff that doesn't even show up in the movie. Or they CGI edit the trailers yeah. because they don't want to give away a spoiler. Exactly. <laughs> Which is a great thing. Other studios, there are other uh, trailer houses that should start doing is not giving away plot points in a movie, <laughs> showing all the scary scenes in a movie. That's like yeah. my wife or all the jokes. And the... <laughs> yeah, or it's like with the Terminator Genesis or whatever it was. It's like oh, the big reveal. Oh, uh, John Connor is a Terminator now. <laughs> oh, thanks, trailer. I saved myself twelve bucks because <laughs> I was actually wanting to go see it, but that trailer is like, you know what? No, I'll wait till it goes on streaming or HBO <laughs> or something. But jumping back into the point, <laughs> yeah, we're so famous for going on all these <laughs> wild tangents. <laughs> we want to know exactly your uh, side of the things. How have you been um, affected by certain things that are coming up and through either if you're part of the movie or film industry or gaming part or anything anything life yeah so we, to speak we really want that uh perspective of the females in our audience mm -hmm. to really reach out to us and give us that information because that would be really cool to hear and it'd be very helpful i mean you can get your side of the story out as well to all these other little girls that are growing up and said give them the courage you know to stand up like carol danvers get knocked down what do you do <laughs> Brush off your shoulder and <laughs> kick some more butt. <laughs> That's right. It, there was one really, it was a little bit of a stretch, but it was still entertaining where they said that the uh, Captain Marvel movie was a ripoff of Dragon Ball Z. And, yeah. A little bit of a stretch, trying, but huh? pretty funny if you think about it. <laughs> right, we'll get into yeah. it afterwards because, again, spoilers. Well, it's um, like uh, Thor is like always a ripoff of the um, uh, character of Mortal Kombat. Raiden. He's the god of uh, thunder. I don't think so. But, I, I can mean, see it, yeah. but I don't think so. See, that again, that's a stretch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm stretching there. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's just one of those things that we'd love to hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, your your opinions, your thoughts, or even your criticisms. Yeah, reach out on social media. I mean, we're not email. We can you can rename anonymous if you'd like. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's simple. Make up a new account and <laughs> follow our account at Geek Two Zero <laughs> Podcast on Twitter. <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to hit that bell. <laughs> So you don't miss out on any uh, notifications. <laughs> so in all seriousness, yeah, this is something that we actually want to come back to on another episode. Absolutely. We'll get your uh, thoughts and opinions on this because it's, I think it is actually very important. Yeah. Not just to us, but to also our daughters and your daughters and your mothers and your sisters and... And our other viewers yeah. and everything. Absolutely. It's something that it's nothing's going to be done unless you start talking about it, kind of thing. Exactly. It's just stop being on the wayside and stop, <laughs> you know, being the behind the scenes. Get out there, kick open those doors. <laughs> just don't become an extremist. No, we got plenty of those already. <laughs> so I think with that, I think that's a good stopping point there. Yeah, that works for me. All right. So again, thank you for joining us on another Geek 2.0 podcast. And we'll hope to actually see all your emails and stuff like that. That'd be great. And we'll catch you on the next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Geek 2.0 Podcast. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash geek 2.0 podcast. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter at geek 2.0 podcast. Don't forget to visit our website at geek20podcast.com for older episodes, news, and much more. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast through your favorite podcatcher or player of choice. The Geek 2.0 Podcast is part of the Collective Network. <laughs>